She's already won two Olympic finals and she was going for her fifth consecutive gold medal in that final. But she wasn't there. She didn't run in the semis. It was really, really strange, Jess. There was kind of no news. There were videos circulating on social media, though, of her trying to access the warm-up track earlier in the day before the semis and not being allowed in. We're being told, we, we were told that that was something to do with the uh, not getting on the Team Jamaica bus or the, the game. She changed the rule yesterday. Like, wasn't that long? She changed the rule and then not say. So you're asking all the athletes who, for whatever reason, don't stay in the village, them can't come through the game. The Paris Olympics 2024 began amidst a whirlwind of controversy, setting the tone for games marked by unexpected upheavals. From a contentious opening ceremony to ongoing disputes, the Olympics have seen their fair share of drama. Have you watched any of the Olympics? I thought that the opening ceremony was a disgrace, actually. I thought it was a disgrace. But the most controversial moment yet came all thanks to the omission of Jamaican female sprinter Shelly Ann Fraser Price. The two-time Olympic 100M champion has expressed her disappointment after missing the women's 100M final at Paris 2024 and pulling out moments before the semifinals. But what led to that incident is now causing friction among fans and the event organizers. We came through this game yesterday and went through security and was okay. The man said we can't go in, we have all the way up where everybody else are entered to come back down yesterday. That's crazy! No immediate reason was revealed for the Jamaican's absence when it was announced on the scoreboard at the Stade de France moments before the semifinal battle with Shikari Richardson and Julian Alfred. The shock news came several hours after footage spread on social media of the 37-year-old arguing with officials after being blocked from entering a warm-up track. Fraser Price, participating at her fifth games, could be heard saying, they've changed the rules, we always come through this gate. The rule yesterday. Like, wasn't that they change the rule and then not say. So you're asking all the athletes who, for whatever reason, don't stay in the village, them can't come through the game. So, was this a calculated attack on black athletes? And what is the end game anyway? We won't be having a Last Supper as portrayed the way they portrayed it the other night. I just think, look, I'm for everybody. I'm very open-minded. You understand. Yeah. You know me yeah. better than most people know yeah. me. It will be a massive heartbreak for the legendary sprinter who had confirmed this was going to be her final take on the world stage. Alfred from St. Lucia would go on to win the final in a stunning time of 10.72 seconds, beating Richardson into silver with fellow Team USA track star Melissa Jefferson in bronze. It's the final Olympic Games, let me repeat that. Fraser Price told Jamaican newspaper The Gleaner, this time around, I've been having fun, a good experience, the Olympic spirit. Meeting people, I went to rugby the first time I've been to a match. So far, it's been good, always excited to step on the track. It's where you unleash everything you're experiencing. To be at my fifth Olympics is a blessing. It's crazy and a blessing, she revealed before the games began. Fraser Price has eight Olympic medals, including gold in the 4X100 at the Tokyo Games in 2021. She also has 16 medals at World Championships, including five 100 meter titles, the most recent of which came in 2022. Her departure meant that the three Jamaicans who swept the podium in Tokyo all missed the final. That is after 2020, champion Elaine Thompson Hira shut down her season earlier this year with an Achilles tendon injury. Bronze medalist Sherika Jackson announced this week that she was focusing on the 200 before ultimately pulling out of that event too on Sunday. But the Fraser incident is just the tip of the iceberg. The non-traditional opening ceremony on July 26 was both memorable and divisive. Athletes glided down the river scene while performers reenacted historic moments. But one particular scene drew significant backlash. Drag queens and dancers lined up along a table evoked comparisons to Leonardo da Vinci's The Last Supper. Many, including Elon Musk, criticized this imagery as offensive to Christian sensibilities. Artistic director Thomas Jolly defended the performance, insisting there was no intention to mock or disrespect. The Paris 2024 spokesperson later apologized. 
emphasizing a desire for inclusivity rather than for provocation. After years of dedication and sacrifice, the least Olympic athletes deserved in Paris this summer was adequate facilities to help fuel their quests for glory. But that hasn't been the case. Instead, they've been greeted by quite the opposite. Following the event opening, U.S. tennis star Coco Gauff revealed her entire team had become the latest athletes to flee an Olympic village, which seemed to be doing more harm than good almost one week into the 2024 games. <laughs> Goff, 20, posted a candid TikTok video that exposed the shocking conditions Olympians are enduring inside the brand new $1.6 billion facility. The US Open champion was forced to share a bathroom with 10 of her compatriots before five of them packed up and left. America's female tennis stars were not the first athletes to walk out on the Olympic Village this summer. And given the wide range of complaints flooding in, they are unlikely to be the last. Organizers at the Paris Games were determined to make this Olympics the most sustainable of all time, prioritizing a green approach in almost every area. However, this aggressive focus on being eco-friendly has resulted in appalling conditions for competitors striving for greatness in the French capital, meaning world records have been few and far between so far. Every room lacks air conditioning, leading to uncomfortably stuffy temperatures. They are also all equipped with bog standard cardboard beds. U.S. gymnast Frederick Richard was even forced to ship his own mattress to the village in Paris because the beds on offer were so deficient. Everyone's complaining about beds and stuff, he said. I ordered my bed already, shipped it here. I had a comfy bed from the start. Those who didn't think ahead like Richard have no choice but to rest on cardboard while chasing their Olympic dreams. And if a hot and painful night's sleep isn't bad enough, the food on offer to athletes is said to be 60% vegan, which is a huge difficulty for those who live on meat-based diets to get themselves in peak physical condition. To make matters worse, the Olympic Village was hit by a food shortage just one day after the opening ceremony. French publication Le Keep reported that vital items such as eggs and grilled meats had to be rationed at breakfast on Saturday, with some lodging complaints over their measly portions. The shortage of eggs was believed to be the biggest concern. Given that they form a crucial part of most athletes' diets, due to their high protein and good fats, as well as various nutrients and minerals. Australia's queen of the pool, Ariane Titmus, was left feeling depleted at the games. The three-time swimming gold medalist unleashed on the ridiculous conditions, she believes thwarted her bid to set a world record in the 400 meter freestyle. It probably wasn't the time I thought I was capable of, but living in the Olympic village makes it hard to perform. Titmus admitted in an interview the following day, it's definitely not made for high performance. So it's about who can really keep it together in the mind. These dire conditions are stifling Olympic stars in their bid to go down in history with retired Australian swimmer, James Magnuson taking a swipe at Paris Chiefs for damaging the quality of the show. The lack of world records boils down to this whole eco-friendly carbon footprint vegan first mentality rather than high performance, Magnuson said. They had a charter that said 60% of food in the village had to be vegan friendly. And the day before the opening ceremony, they ran out of meat and dairy options in the village because they hadn't anticipated so many athletes would be choosing the meat and dairy options over the vegan friendly ones. He continued, the caterer had to rejig their numbers and bring in more of those products because surprise, surprise, World-class athletes don't have vegan diets. They must have watched the Netflix doco Game Changers and assumed everyone was the same. But let me tell you, Usain Bolt, Michael Phelps, Roger Federer, none of those guys are on a vegan diet. Even worse, athletes are not treated like VIPs when making their way to events. Public transport must be used when heading to stadiums, arenas, velodromes, and more, meaning competitors will have already endured hot and busy commutes before they arrive for the games. 
six South Korean swimmers left the Olympic Village and moved into a hotel near the swimming arena to avoid the long commute in hot buses, the Korean Swimming Federation president said. KSF President Chong Chang Hoon said the swimmers on the men's 4X 200 meter freestyle relay team moved into a hotel five minutes from Paris La Defense Arena, where the swimming events were held. Chong received complaints that the buses the swimmers used to travel to the arena had no air conditioning while the windows were taped shut. The Olympic Village is nearly 12 kilometers away from the swimming arena. We just want to make sure they will be at least a bit more comfortable, Chong said. Aside from the opening ceremony and the substandard facilities, the Seine, a central feature of the games, faced scrutiny over its water quality. Despite a $153 billion cleanup effort, heavy rains led to high bacteria levels, causing delays and cancellations of events. While tests eventually confirmed the water as excellent quality, the initial concerns led to speculation and criticism, particularly when some athletes fell ill. It was never going to be all fun and games at the 2024 Olympics, but the woke idea has proven to be a real thorn in the flesh this time around. And not just because for every podium boasting an event's gold, silver, and bronze medalists, there are exponentially more athletes not on that podium. Or when it came to the shocking ending to the women's floor exercise final, Romanian gymnast Anna Barbasu thought she was on the podium only to be knocked off by a twist of human error that, while a wrong was ultimately righted for Jordan Childs, dashed her medal dreams. I decided not to attend the closing ceremony of the Paris Olympics following the scandalous situation in the gymnastics where our athletes were treated in an absolutely dishonorable manner. Romanian Prime Minister Marcel Ciolacu wrote on Facebook in response, to withdraw a medal earned for honest work on the basis of an appeal is totally unacceptable. Obviously, he continued, somewhere in the system of organizing this competition, something is wrong. And he's not the only head of state who's been incensed by a perceived slight during these games, nor is Barbosu the only athlete to think she was in, only to end up being out. Though Siolaku vowed she would still be treated as an Olympic medalist in her home country, including in terms of the prizes. Ultimately, though the excitement and joy radiating from Paris has been palpable around the globe, there's no such thing as an Olympics unfolding without controversy, and the woke idealism is winning. Whether it's the internet-fueled kind whipped up by a comment going viral, or a larger issue, such as a soccer coach being kicked off the team over spying allegations, or a river that's only sometimes safe to swim in, these summer games have hosted their share of drama. The 2024 games had barely begun when Bev Priestman, head coach of the Canadian women's soccer team, was removed from her post by Canada Soccer after her staff was accused of using drones to spy on the New Zealand team ahead of their group stage match. Additional information has come to our attention regarding previous drone use against opponents predating the Paris 2024 Olympic Games. Canada Soccer CEO and General Secretary Kevin Blue said in a July 25th statement explaining the decision. In light of these new revelations, Canada Soccer has made the decision to suspend Bev Priestman for the remainder of the Paris 2024 Olympic Games and until the completion of our recently announced independent external review. Priestman apologized saying in a statement, I am absolutely heartbroken for the players, and I would like to apologize from the bottom of my heart for the impact this situation has had on all of them. The team, which won gold in Tokyo, is a group of people who care very much about sportsmanship and integrity, she continued. As the leader of the team on the field, I want to take accountability and I plan to fully cooperate with the Canadian Soccer Association investigation you think that was the worst? Wait till you hear this. South Korea was mistaken for North Korea during the opening ceremony. As the boat carrying athletes from South Korea came into view during the July 26th opening ceremony, they were incorrectly announced in both French and English, 
as being from the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, which is North Korea. South Korea, meanwhile, is the Republic of Korea. In a July 27 statement, the International Olympic Committee noted, we deeply apologize for the mistake that occurred when introducing the Korean team during the opening ceremony broadcast. IOC President Thomas Bach also called South Korean President Yoon Suk Yeol to apologize per the chief executive's office, which relayed that Yoon told Bach the people of South Korea were very shocked and embarrassed by the mistake. An IOC spokesperson called the error an operational mistake that was clearly deeply regrettable. Parade order is determined alphabetically according to the host nation's language, minus Greece, which always goes first as the home of the first Olympics and the host nation goes last. South Korea was the 48th country in the Parade of Nations, while North Korea was 153rd. There have also been sexist comments. British commentator Bob Ballard was pulled from Eurostar's Olympics coverage for making a remark that was widely derided as sexist after Australian swimmers Molly O'Callaghan, Shayna Jack, Emma McKeon, and Meg Harris won goal in the 4x100 meter freestyle relay. Well, the women are just finishing off, Ballard said following the race. You know what women are like hanging around doing their makeup? His co-commentator, Lizzie Simmons replied, outrageous Bob, some of the men are doing that as well. Calling his comment inappropriate, Eurostar said in a July 29th statement, Ballard had been removed with immediate effect from further coverage. The veteran sportscaster promptly apologized. The comments I made during the Australian freestyle relay victory ceremony on Saturday have caused some offense, he wrote on X. It was never my intention to upset or belittle anyone, and if I did, I apologize. I am a massive advocate of women's sport. That hasn't been the end of this year's Olympic sagas. After speculation that a too shallow pool inside La Defense Arena was responsible for slower than expected times in swimming, the athletes torpedoed the idea that the water wasn't deep enough to smash records. I think it's totally a myth. Team USA's Regan Smith, who swam away from Paris with five medals, told NBCOlympics.com after she and Gretchen Walsh, Lily King, and Tori Huska set a new world record in the women's 4X 100 meter medley. I think at first people were very aware of the lack of new records. So I think that caused some chatter like, oh, is it the pool that's doing this? But I think as the meet went on, people got used to it. And then I think they got more comfortable with it. And then we started seeing some really fast swims. Added four-time medalist Walsh, I think much of what the Olympics is and what it represents makes any pool that it's at feel kind of slow because you have so much pressure on yourself that it is hard at your 100% best. Around the swimming pool, something else happened. Brazilian swimmer Ana Carolina Vieira was sent home after, according to the Brazilian Olympic Committee, she committed two acts of indiscipline. She left the Olympic Village with boyfriend and teammate Gabriel Santos without permission. The BOC said after acting in a disrespectful and aggressive manner in response to a technical decision made by the Brazilian swimming team committee regarding the 4x100M freestyle relay. In a video titled, How a Communication Failure Destroyed My Olympic Dream, Vieira lamented what happened but said everything is going to be solved at the right time. Still, in South America, the Paraguayan Olympic Committee asked swimmer Luana Alonso to leave the Games, alleging in a statement that she had created an inappropriate atmosphere at the heart of Team Paraguay. We thank her for proceeding as instructed, the statement continued, as it was of her own free will that she did not spend the night in the athlete's village. The Southern Methodist University student had seemingly already returned to Texas when she wrote on Instagram story, translated from Spanish. I just wanted to make it clear that I was never removed or expelled from anywhere. Stop spreading false information. I don't want to give any statement, but I'm not going to let lies affect me either. The endless controversies even got hold of legendary gymnast Simone Biles. 
Biles had already let it be known what she thought of Tokyo teammate Michaela Skinner's criticism of the U.S. gymnastics team selected to go to Paris. And Skinner had apologized for saying in a since deleted video that the talent and the depth just isn't like what it used to be. And that obviously a lot of girls don't work as hard. But after the 2024 squad won team gold, Biles captioned a photo of the athletes, lack of talent, lazy Olympic champions, and apparent jab at Skinner's original comment. On August the 6th, Skinner reiterated in an Instagram video that she had poorly articulated her original point. But she added, the cyberbullying she and her family had been subject to, fallout from her cyber feud with Biles had gotten out of hand. She pleaded with the seven time gold medalist to please put a stop to this. Please ask your followers to stop. During her medal winning run, neither Biles nor Suni Lee medaled in beam this year after both gymnasts fell off the apparatus during their final routines. Afterward, Biles commented on the strangely quiet environment during their penultimate event in Paris. It was really weird and awkward. The athlete who earned bronze on beam in Tokyo told the Associated Press, we've asked several times if we can have some music or some background noise. I'm not really sure what happened there, but yeah, not our favorite. None of us liked it. In response to the GOATS complaint, the International Gymnastics Federation said the atmosphere was part of the sports presentation plan at Paris 2024. Lee noted that the pressure was definitely on and a lot of people were definitely feeling it. She wondered if it was so quiet the nearby photographers could hear her breathing. It adds to the stress, Lee said, just because it's like you, yes, you're the only one up there. So I was feeling the pressure. In the same competition, Jordan Childs seemingly finished out of the running for a medal when she completed her floor exercise final routine and received a score of 13.666. Romania's Ana Barbosu was ahead of her in third place with a score of 13.700. However, after Team USA filed a score inquiry on Chile's behalf and the judges further reviewed her performance, her start value increased by one-tenth of a point. As a result, her score was subsequently bumped up to 13.766, meaning she got the bronze and Barbosu, who was already waving her country's flag in celebration, left the arena in tears. Afterward, Barbosu posted a video of herself competing and wrote, thank you to everyone who encouraged me before, during, and after the competition. There has also been drama on the track Metal adjustments haven't been confined to the gymnastics arena. Kenyan runner Faith Kipyegon was initially disqualified for seeming to jostle Gudaf Sagai of Ethiopia during the women's 5,000 meters at the Stade de France on August 5th, negating her second place finish. I have never seen anything like that in an Olympic final that went on for so long. Commentator Kara Gusher, a two-time Olympian, said on the broadcast, noting that the two women also appeared to exchange heated words. You see a little bit of elbow, you see a little bit of frustration, but that was many strides and scolding. It wasn't until the wee hours of August 6th that Kipyegon found out her silver medal had been reinstated. The Olympic Jury of Appeal ruled that while there had been significant contact between her and Sagai, the incident did not warrant a disqualification. With that, Italy's Nadia Baracletti, the fourth place finisher, bumped into the bronze position by the disqualification, was re-relegated to fourth. Still, there was more. Two athletes' hopes of a medal were dashed when they unwittingly broke rules mid-swim, meaning they didn't even know they were out until they finished their races. Great Britain's Luke Greenbank finished first in his 200 meter backstroke heat, but was disqualified for staying underwater for further than the maximum 15 meters after first diving in. Win or lose, I've always been my own harshest critic, but sometimes you've just got to take it as it comes, he wrote on Instagram on August 1st. I can take pride in the fact that I know I was in great shape coming into these games after a tough few years, but this will motivate me to come back stronger. A technical error also knocked Alex Walsh off the 200-meter individual medley podium after she finished in the bronze position. 
As she approached the wall during the last leg of her backstroke, she made an illegal turn by starting to flip out of position before she tapped the wall and launched into her breaststroke. Still proud, Walsh wrote on Instagram on August 6th, thanking her supporters a few days after the race. Despite the DQ, this Olympics has been an experience that has left me feeling happy and fulfilled, and I will cherish that forever. After all, everything happens for a reason and there is so much more to be excited about for me in this sport. So, will this go down in history as the worst Olympics ever? I think, in my opinion, if you're going to ask, you know, if you, have, if you have athletes and you want athletes to perform at a professional level, then I think that they need the adequate sustenance. You know what I mean? Sorry if you guys hear, um, sorry if you guys hear anything in the background. I think there's like some plane coming uh, above. Um, but yeah, I think that, you know, if you're going to tell, if you, if you want your professional athletes to perform at a professional level, then they need the adequate sustenance to perform at that level. You know what I mean? They can't be lacking the eggs and the meat. You know what I mean? That they need because y'all have been spending all y'all budget on inclusive dancers on a Diddy dance squad. Okay. Y'all been spending y'all entire budget on the Diddy dance squad. Okay. And now, and now these athletes are lacking the adequate sustenance to perform at a professional level. Bruh, don't y'all want these ratings to go up, bruh? Don't y'all want, bro, don't y'all want this, uh, you know what I mean? Don't y'all want this, this thing to, um, to attract more attention, more, more viewers, more people, you know, more money for the Olympics, the better that they're performing, the more hype it is. Okay. But no, because they're pushing an agenda. You understand? This is why we have the Diddy Dance Squad. The Diddy Dance Squad, okay? Because they are pushing that agenda right now, bro. That's the agenda that they want to push, you know? Um, there's no reason, you know, that we, we already, the Olympics are already very inclusive, you know? We have a whole section of the Olympics. We, we the, the women get a lot of representation in the Olympics. They already get plenty of representation. Um, it's already very inclusive. So why are we trying to, to push this even further? You know, we're pushing this to a degree where it shouldn't be. You know what I mean? Um, and that's because th ultimately it's not about the Olympics. The The people at the top, the people who are in control of all of these scenarios, they don't care about the Olympics. They don't care about your, at your favorite athlete. They don't care. They don't care about your enjoyment anymore. No, what they care about now is pushing this agenda. They want to push this specific agenda on everyone. You know, they want everyone to fall in line with the Dwayne Wade uh, and, and Zaire or whatever that, that, you know, his kid's name is, they want you to, they want you to fall in line with that type of agenda. The Dwayne Wade and Gabrielle Union agenda. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yes. This is where things are going. This is where they're trying to push things. You know what I mean? And, um, that is the reason why, you know, all of these situations are going to be like this. This is why you see things that are out of place happening. You know, th 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 this inclusive dance, this inclusive dance, Diddy dance squad is out of place at the Olympics. It doesn't belong there. It doesn't belong there because the Olympics is about what? It's about athletes. It's about um, perseverance. It's about, you know, winning the medal. You know what I mean? It's about competition. Okay. What about that is about inclusivity? I just said a bunch of words there and none of those words meant inclusivity. Do you get what I'm coming? Do you get where I'm coming from right now? Like this is the problem with, with, with the agenda that they're trying to push. You understand? It just doesn't fit, you know, and when something doesn't fit in that way, you can't try to force it on. You can't try to force it on the world. You can't try to force your agenda that much when, um, when that's not where it's supposed to, you know, when you, if you want to push your agenda, okay, push your agenda. But push it in another way. Push it somewhere else, you know? Create your own Olympics for your own agenda to push. But you can't do that because that's not going to get any ratings. No one wants to see that. That won't make any money. So what you're going to do is you're going to try to push it on the people to where the people just accept it, that, to where they just slowly but surely accept the agenda that's being pushed. You know what I mean? That is, that is the whole idea, you know? Um, they feed it to you in small doses. Oh, okay, we'll have a Diddy Dance Squad. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll do this. We'll do that. You know, we'll put the real budget that the, that the Olympic athletes deserve into this, into this dance squad, into this inclusive dance squad, into this zesty squad, right? Into the zest squad. So that's what they're doing. 
and they feed it to you bit by bit until slowly but surely the public accept it. The public condemn anyone who, who, who speaks against it. And now they create these phobic terms to, to, to throw on you. They create these terms to throw on you so that, you know, you have to fall in line or, or you're being toxic or you're being, you know, or you're being phobic or some type of phobic that they're going to create up for whatever new agenda that they want to push. You understand? This is how they do it. They use they use shame. They use shame to make people fall in line with the with uh, the, the 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 direction that they want society to go in. This is how they this is how they do it. They use social pressure and and shaming tactics to fool everyone to falling into something that that no one really agrees with. This is how it's done. And then eventually at once everyone's with the program, once everyone's with the agenda, there ain't no going back. You know what I mean? Once 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 Pandora's box is opened, this is a Pandora's box moment in society. Once Pandora's box is open and everyone has accepted the agenda for what it is and everyone's okay with it, you can never put it back. You can never put it back in. It's like social media. It's like social media. You know how social media is created and, and it's created all of these problems and all of these things? It can never be put away. It's a Pandora's box. You can never you can never you can never put it back in. Once you take it out, it's always there. It's out now. It's it's out, and that's how it's always going to be. And it, and it ain't going to ever be different than that. That's what that means. You know what I mean? And this is what this is. You know? This is how they're trying to push this agenda. They want to they wanna, um, make everyone accept it, and then they don't, and then they, they're going to be like, no turning back now. Y'all accepted it. Y'all should have been against this. Y'all should have fought against this. Y'all should have called this out. Y'all should have boycotted this when we first brought it up. But no, you didn't because you wasn't paying attention. So yeah, you guys, that is the whole situation with that, you know, but yeah, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. What do you guys think about it? Um, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. How do you guys feel about them having that type of that whole inclusive dance squad and, um, spending the budget that they should be putting for that, for the athletes to get the adequate sustenance that they need to perform at a professional level? How do you sp feel about them spending that on pushing their own agenda? You know what I mean? How do you guys feel about that type of stuff? Let me know what your thoughts in the comments below, you know? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, like the video. Sorry if you heard like that, some airplane, some some noises in the background. You probably won't though, because a lot of times my voice goes over that type of stuff. A lot of times my voice just goes over it just because I'm talking so directly um, into the mic. So um, hopefully that's the case here because I, I really didn't want to stop my whole rant to, to go turn, to go close the window, which I should have done, to be honest. But yeah, you guys... Um, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. And if you enjoyed the video, like the video. Snow is right here. Be easy, y'all.